Hi, I'm Bob Pfeiffer from Slipstream. In this video, I will be demonstrating how to inspect the trunk line, evaluate the distribution system, and the techniques that are used to seal air leaks in one important section of your ductwork. Previously, we showed the importance of identifying where the registers are and making sure that they're free from any crushing or any damage and that the dampers work good. Now we're gonna take a little bit deeper dive and take a look at the distribution system itself. First, I'm starting out by making sure that the riser is intact and that it's securely fastened to the joists. So I'm just taking a hammer, pounding in the nails and the staples, making sure that that opening is as large as it can be. After that's done, I'm gonna take a flashlight and shine that into the trunk line and I'm going to take a look with a mirror and just see if there's any debris down there, any junk, any garbage, anything that may be blocking airflow. There may be the ducts may be crushed. There may be some holes. I'm going to identify all those things, seal up what I can, clean it out where it's possible. You can see there is a little block of wood. I'll be pulling some stuff out of there, wearing a pair of gloves because it's pretty nasty in there. You can imagine the registers on the floor, so a lot of dirt and dust just inadvertently falls into that area. So I'm just digging around, feeling for things. All sorts of little odds and ends come up. You can also take a camera and take a flash down the trunk line itself and then pull the camera out and take a look if you don't have a mirror. That works really well. Surprisingly, good images can be gotten by using a camera. I'm going to show you four photographs that I took with my camera of various types of ductwork and various conditions. The first two, metal and ductboard, are clean and unobstructed. This is what we want to see. The third and fourth pictures, you can see holes and collapsing of the ductwork. This does not allow the air to move freely and as a result, you're losing energy and it's causing comfort issues in the home as well. So once I've cleaned out that entire trunk line from the area I can reach, then I'm going to take a mirror and look at the underside where that riser attaches to the trunk. There's a series of tabs on all four sides that are supposed to be tight to the trunk line. If they're not, that's some of the area that you want to seal. Using a larger mirror, you can see the gaps that are there. Those little tabs all have spaces. That allows the conditioned air that we're trying to either heat or cool to flow into the floor cavity. We don't really want the air to go there. We want it to go into the living space. Notice that these two duct connections are in much worse shape than the ones that we just looked at. In the second photo, the riser is completely disconnected. There's going to be some major work needed to repair this. So all the conditioned air that you're paying for gets into the room you're wanting to heat or cool. Once repaired, this will save you energy and make your room much more comfortable. So now I'm cutting some two inch mesh tape. This is very similar to the tape we use in patching drywall seams and drywall tape. So I'm cutting them a little bit longer than the actual opening itself because those pieces will overlap and they will go to fill in that gap area. After they're cut, <clears throat> I'm going to get out the mastic and we'll be using either one of these two different types of mastic to seal up the holes. This can be gotten from a big box store. You can see it's called duct sealant and the other brand is called mastic, RCD mastic, used for ducts. Now with the gloves on, I'll open up the can and then I will just liberally spread that on with my hand. It's too hard to get a brush in there, can't get a caulking gun in there, so it's all hand applied. Now those tabs are all have little sharp edges on them, corners, and it's easy for the gloves to get ripped, to get punctured, so you got to be real careful when you're putting that on. I use a thick layer of mastic and I just squeeze that into those gaps and cracks, making sure they get 100% of the area sealed up. 
I'll go around all four sides doing that, working from one edge to the other. Now you notice I left the mirror in there. The reason I left the mirror in there is I want to be able to take a look at the work as I'm doing it to make sure that all the gaps are actually indeed sealed up. After I put that first coat of mastic in, I will take that mesh tape and press that into that bed of mastic, squeezing it in nice and tight. This just adds another layer of protection, another layer of sealing, helps hold everything together. That mastic will be run from the tabs all the way onto the top of the trunk on all four sides so that we have a nice good bond. As you can see, it's a little difficult to work. You're on your hands and knees, bending over, not really able to see that. That's what the mirror comes in handy for. Now I take that mirror and inspect my work. You can see in that area there, all I see is mastic. So it's a good job there. Now I move over to the other side, and what do I see? Well, I can see the mesh tape. I can see some duct mastic there. Not really done perfectly. I will go and finish that off. And I will do a quality control check of my work real time and then finish up. Take that mirror out. Now I work my way towards the top. I'm going to run a bead of caulk where that riser meets the subfloor. Another area where air can escape. I'm going to run just a small bead. Trying to be as neat as possible. Whoops, not always. But then getting that sealed up. Using a clear caulk here is probably the best to use. I use acrylic because it's water based. And just with the finger, smoothing out that surface, embedding that caulk into that gap so we have a nice tight seal. This way I'll be able to put that register back on without having it bind up because that opening was made smaller by the caulk that was applied. Now best practice would have that I would let this dry and then put the register on, but that may not always be possible. In any case, you want to put the register on, lift it up, make sure that the caulking is still intact. If so, put the register back on and you're good to go. And we'll do this for every single register that we have in the house. Well, thank you everybody for watching. We hope you learned some easy ways to improve your comfort and increase your manufactured home's energy efficiency.